2016 proved another successful year for the Romela oil field. Despite the financial challenges and uncertainties posed by the low global oil price, the Romela team managed safely to sustain and even increase production. The team had to look very hard at opportunities that could give us more for less cost. And we've been able to do that through the existing well stock, well interventions and opportunities on surface that have allowed for oil growth. During 2016, Romela produced an average of 1.4 million barrels per day, with more than 800,000 barrels coming from North Romela only. And that is indeed double from the rates it had in 2009. And the fundamentals around North Romela are really neat because it's what we've instilled and developed over the seven years since we created Romela. And it's around having energy go into the reservoir in the way of, of water injected. It's around understanding the withdrawal rates and ensuring that it's in balance with the energy being introduced into the reservoir. And it's around looking at the sweet spots or the high oil density areas and preferentially developing those such that we get higher initial oil rates from the wells and back that up with, with the right pressure support. After reviewing the facilities, the team developed smart solutions to enhance the processing capability. We make the maintenance and the DS2 says the S3 in order to receive more oil. For example, DS2 it is the bottleneck in production, but we now plan to install a new trains in order to receive all the oil for DS2 area. Across Romelo's facilities, new equipment such as free water knockouts, dehydrators and desalters, and new production trains are brought in. Turnaround programs continue at degassing and cluster pump stations. The Veolia water treatment plant in Karmatali also facilitated the installation of new modules. What you see is actually a tailored solution on an individual degassing station basis. And the reality is we've not doing free water knockout initially on all 14 degassing stations. We've chosen the south as a focus area because of the natural aquifer. In the north, expansion is the theme because we've got excess well capacity. And so we've chosen to expand DS2 train to, but we did it in an innovative and creative way. Romela uses existing resources such as vessels and equipment from the South Oil Company of Iraq. SLC labor and staff also helped deliver the project at about 50% less cost than in the past. The DND program is one where we're focused on the tail end of the process and in that it's around getting the quality and the specification right and due to different legacy issues the desalters and dehydrators are in different states so we've got a refurbishment, replacement and a new program to help harness the existing equipment as best as possible, but also move the totality of the vessels in the right direction. All work across Romela operation is undertaken according to strict international HSE procedures. Control of work help us put many of measures to ensure that all the activities is safe. Control of work is now a standard across the entire operation. We starting 2012 with first step in this station, I issue permit number one, and to now we issue more than 2,000 something permits. Safety has also been a key focus for the drilling teams who have delivered 25 new wells during 2016. We focus on the three items. This is toolbox talk, stop work authority, and the very, very important, this is the red zone. When we make statistics for the injuries, we saw all the injuries outside of the rig floor, 90% outside of the rig floor. The extended red zone is helping to reduce near misses and other incidents. You don't have any access to the red zone if you don't have somebody to join you, go in this area. In 2016, Romela operated with only two drilling rigs, yet the team was able to increase drilling efficiency and performance. 
Iraqi well site managers were trained, developed and appointed to all drilling locations. Romela overall is now operated by a 94% Iraqi workforce. The team also put greater emphasis on well services due to the high cost of drilling new wells. Rigless operations improved productivity from existing wells. We work together with subsurface and to choose the with well with a high priority for the workover jobs. And for well service, so we use the core tubing. And not only for the nitrogen lifting, and also we use the core tubing to do the water shut off job. Well interventions such as coil tubing technology helped increase productivity from existing wells and they also reactivated seized wells. Behind me you see the, uh, the mass coil tubing units. And these units are, are really new to the field. With mass coil tubing units, you cut all the risk, you cut all the time without needing a crane, without needing people to go involved with lifting operation. Going forward, we'll use these units to do more and more interventions that will put more of a load on those and allow our workover rigs to do more of the heavy lifting around new ESPs or replacement ESPs. Almost 5,000 well service jobs were completed during the year and more workovers achieved than initially planned. The well worker program contains many activities like repair ESPs, new ESPs, water shutoff, water injection repairs, water injection, it was a tremendous achievement. Now in, in November, the average of the water injected in the in Mishrif and Mempe, 900 MBDs. Optimization of existing resources has also played a big role. As a team, we've added over 160,000 barrels through optimization, which is about 75,000 barrels on average through the year. Over 90% of my team is Iraqi and one of the big pushes we've had is on developing their capability. So our success this year it couldn't be without them, but it also couldn't be without their capability that we've brought through BP and through the technology that we've implemented. BP and PetroChina's partnership in the Romela operating organization has brought world-class technology, knowledge and a global procurement network to support this giant oil field. A decision has also been made to invest in a power plant to supply Romela with electricity to run its facilities. By December 2016, the construction of the early power plant was at 80% completion. EPP is a great example where we've been able to harness the relationship. We've got CPEC, Chinese contractor, in a turnkey arrangement, where we have let them manage, execute the project as a turnkey. And what it means for North Romela is greater reliability. It'll mean greater reliability for the cluster pump stations. The water that's being injected in North Romela is critical to its success. And that reliability, ultimately over a year, two years, means more water in the ground. The Chinese turnkey contractor CPECC employs and subcontracts a significant number of local Iraqi resources. In 2016, Rumela awarded $435 million worth of contracts to Iraqi companies. At the same time, the training and development of Iraqi staff continued with over 230,000 hours of training completed. Romela also continued to invest into the communities in and around the oil field. The water project at Karmatali village is a great example of social investment, making a real difference. 10,000 lives affected by the phase one of our water project, but we've been able to provide water to the community. The team is focusing on the sustainability of each project. The Women's Cultural Center is an example of that, where they get training and we hope that that training then leads to a potential business venture or additional income that the women can then take into their communities. Field and sports facilities are all the things that attract uh, attention just because it's recreation and it's enjoyed by many. And we're also constructing two football pitches up in the north. We've got probably well over 50, 55 different nationalities represented in any one day as part of our team. And pulling that energy together in a one team spirit is the key. 
and we look forward to continuing to do that as one team as we move into 2017 and beyond.